If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question on your own before listening on. In order to understand this question, what we're going to have to do first is draw a picture that represents the information that's being described. So here we have placed the missile at the origin and we've shown the initial velocity with this red vector and it's fired at an angle of 37 degrees to the horizontal. Of course it travels in a parabola and then ends up in the final scenario here and we've drawn a little explosion there for good measure. And what we want to do is next, after drawing the picture, is consider a projectile motion table that will help us summarize the information. Now in this table, of course, we have the initial velocity, the final velocity, acceleration time, and displacement. And the key idea to solving this and all other projectile motion questions is to break the information into both an x and a y direction. So for example, if we look at the initial velocity, we know it's fired at an angle. What we need to do is break this initial velocity into its x and y components. So let's go ahead and draw those. So here are the x and y components in green. We know that this vector right here is pointing along the x direction, and so it's the x component. What we notice is that it is adjacent to the 37 degree angle. And because it's adjacent, we can use the cosine function to represent that x component. So what we can do is write the hypotenuse, or the initial velocity as shown, multiplied by the cosine of the angle of 37 degrees. For the y component, we can see that it's opposite from the 37 degree angle, so we're going to multiply the hypotenuse times the sine of 37 degrees sine because it's opposite. So we'll fill those initial velocities into the x and y direction. The final velocity right now is unknown, so we can leave that blank. Then for the acceleration, in the x direction there is no acceleration. There's no force of gravity acting horizontally, so the velocity of this object won't, won't change. So we can make the acceleration zero. In the y direction, of course, we have the gravitational force causing this acceleration of negative 9.8. The time was stated in the question as 7.6 seconds. You're allowed to plug that in for both the x and the y direction. Those times will always be the same. And then the displacement in the x direction is actually not known. We don't know how far horizontally the projectile travels, but the displacement in the y direction is absolutely known because notice that initially the object starts at ground level and then finally it's back to ground level. So its overall vertical or y displacement is indeed zero. Okay, with those values filled in, we can take away the picture and start considering the equations of kinematics. And we're actually going to consider the y direction first. And the reason for that is if we look at the column of the y information, we can see that we have the most items filled in. So it's usually best to start with what you know the most about. We can turn to the following equation from kinematics. So we know the displacement is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction times the time and then plus one half at squared. We can actually go ahead and plug in the given information based on what we filled in in our chart. So we'll plug in for all of these different parameters. Just notice that for displacement, we've put delta y in the equation, but in the chart we just use a generic delta x. So they're the same thing in the y direction. Of course, we don't say delta x, we say delta y. So we've filled that in. And also notice that the plus sign became a minus since the acceleration was negative. So we have an equation here that we can simplify and actually solve for the initial velocity, which is one of the two questions they're asking. So we'll go ahead and simplify this term on our calculators and then add it over to the left side. And then to solve for v naught, the initial velocity, we can just divide both sides of the equation by the sine of 37 times 7.6. It'll cancel out on the right. And then on the left, we just have to plug it into our calculators. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And we obtain a value of approximately 61.87 or 61.9. And since that's a velocity, that would be in meters per second. So we've actually successfully solved for the initial velocity with which the missile was fired. Just note that the magnitude, of course, is the 61.9 meters per second. And then the direction was already given to us, actually, is 37 degrees to the horizontal. So that overall would be the initial velocity of the missile. And now we're ready to calculate the range. Now range is simply the displacement in the x direction. So really we're just looking for this delta x. So we're actually using the same equation, but this time we're doing it in the x direction. And since the acceleration in the x direction, <clears throat> excuse me, was zero, 
we know that we can completely eliminate this term right here. And then at this point, it's just a matter of filling in the known information. Note that the initial velocity in the x direction was v naught times the cosine of 37. So we actually should plug that in first before we plug in the known values. And then now we can take the initial velocity of 61.9 times the cosine of 37. And then again, the time was 7.6 seconds. So we'll plug this in. And when we do, we get 376 meters. So that would be the range of the missile. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You're also welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer them on YouTube. Thanks.